Hey guys, here playing as Kate, and we got ourselves a False Echo DDoS jank deck. Despite having both of the janky pieces here, I don't think this is a keep because we're not going to have any way to really interact with him. Yeah, this is somewhat better. Leprechaun early on, you can host the hybrid driver. You can put the SMC in that as well if you want to. Should be okay. So the main problem in this matchup is they fire beta test and you're like super hosed. So we're going to hope he doesn't fire beta test. Because you have to actually break the ice that goes in R&D, which sucks. We could include stuff like Escher or that kind of thing to deal with that, but... Mm. I don't know if it's worth the deck slots that you had, that you had to cut, cut from somewhere else. You really want to have three of these. You really want to have three of these. A couple of these are good because if you can save SMCing for it, it's a nice benefit. Um, probably not worth quality time just yet. I think we'll just draw a little bit. That's decent. I don't know if it's worth poking the HQ. I mean, if he has like a wall of stacks, I think we're pretty sad about that. Yeah, okay, that's decent. Lay this down. Dump the laundry down? We could, right? Yeah, I don't think it's worth waiting for another one more credit next turn. We'll just not discard any things. All these cards are pretty good. So we're now DDoS away from, well, and we want the keyhole or the medium. So we're slightly further away. Is he going to make a play? He's not. Okay, let's see what he's got in his HQ. I'll just let me in and have a look around. Ghost Branch. Whoa. Oh my, that's exciting. Ghost Branch. Well, how about that? Hmm. Don't think we need this SMC necessarily. Well, no, it's the medium could go, we could clone it in, or the second false echo. Maybe the false echo. Having the SMC will let us get another hyperdriver, which is fairly nice. Fill up our Leprechaun with two hyperdrivers. Okay, that's good. Four MU free. Yeah, we can mass install. That's pretty good. 
click, click, click. So quality time next turn should find the DDoS. That'll be good to go. As we can either just run with media a bunch of times or we can search out the keyhole here. So far he hasn't done anything. So he's giving us plenty of time to set up. If he had been scoring points already, I think it would have been more scary, but I think he's afraid of us just diving into his remote, peeling off the top two ice. Triple ice. So he, he now knows we're on DDoS. Do we find it? We don't find it. Uh, yeah, let's let's load up our tech writer. Is that an agenda or is that a trick because we could commit we could pop a hyper driver go in there and false echo both of those ice if we're able to find our ddos in time i think we let that go and we'll ddos him next turn Being in the face down, just an EG2. Pop the writer. Yeah, this will be good. If he scores, we'll do our thing, and there'll be no Jackson potentially to mess us up. This is prior reckoning, it's an R&D ice up. That will be slightly annoying. We'll have to get our foes before we can run through it a bunch of times. I mean, we saw Ghost Branch and that really put me off this card. This could be anything now. It could be like Secretary. Once someone's shown they're willing to play traps, it's kind of like, oh, better tread carefully. Yeah, what's he gonna do here? He's gonna I'll oh, use a prior rack. Nice. It's kind of what he wants, right? That's uh That's a problem. If he's able to install, I mean there's nothing in his archives right now, but if he's able to install uh, this messes up our DDoS in a bad way. I think we should have gone for that after all. We need like a crescent or something so we can de res. Ah, oh, man. What do we do now? Kind of no good, right? I 
think we just wait though for the second agenda. But yeah, this Arjank is pretty fragile to prior equity, which is not a commonly played card anymore. I think if I had something like Ghost Branch, I would have just gone for it. But I was a little scared that he's playing more advanceable traps and would like hit our Leprechaun. We'd be so sad about that. So if we go for our Keyhole Spree, he's going to be able to install a bunch of cards, paying all costs. And he'll be able to res these ice because the, the false echo won't apply to them. And we can false echo that card if we want, but it doesn't really help us. Paying three cards a pop to deal with that is not really acceptable. Can we let him install from archives over and over? We could pay two cards a pop. Eh. The real problem is that he can res these ice. We could pay through this without too much difficulty. Hmm. So we'll install another false echo. And we'll run here. Yeah, if it was trash, this would be an insane card. So we're gonna get in, and what do we see? Probably a fake out here. No, it's a Vitruvius, cool. I like it. So that was like the blackmail that's kind of tedious to do. Now his hand, let's poke in his hand. Really would have made more sense to do this before, but if this was like a snare or something, we would have wanted to Check it out first, timeline grid. Uh, I think we just trash that. Just to get it out of his hand. I mean, if we can reduce the number of cards in there. Get a prior rec, cool. So that was a good DDoS overall. Despite our R&D plan being like ruined now, we can still remote lock him with the DDoS and he's gonna have a tough time. We can clone chip out another one. And he's actually stuck spending a significant amount of money on install costs to replace all these ice. So I think the gig is not up. We're actually gonna have too much money because we have no real outlet for it. I thought about playing Crypsis instead of Faust, but it just costs so much. I don't think it's right. And over my middle of the MU for it. Darwin's vulnerable to purge. I think this is probably the right choice. 
Like if we had Darwin now, we still wouldn't be happy with this remote. We'd be paying a ton to run out, run the R and D over and over again. Do we have a laundry left? If we do, I might wait for the Hades. No, we used all three. So we'll just go and put this in. Click draw. Third hyperdriver can't really use it. So we'll just put this down. Just in case. I don't think we're going to need extra money, but we might. There's two gambles left in our deck, so we're going to make seven bucks profit off each one. So I think we just wait. I don't know if we can even do anything against our DDoS. Like, the thing is, even if he has like an Ash, we can run twice because the ice is all gone. If he has Caprice, we can play Psy up to like seven, eight, nine times, just bidding zero when he's going to drain his credits every time. So it's going to be pretty tough for him to get a remote score against us. If he fakes us out, that sucks. We'll have to levy, and then we'll get two more shots at DDoS. Got a clone chip left as well, so if we can find that, we'll have more false echoes we can use. I think it's just draw, draw, draw next turn. Test run. Okay, test run for false echo will work. Uh, I don't think there's any point revealing the keyhole. I mean, we could eventually just do a keyhole and pay a bunch of money, and that's fine, right? I think we just install it. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think it's fine. Maybe he'll think we don't have another DDoS. So I would imagine he's going to use this right away after he discards. Like maybe he's baiting us here. Wasn't sure if he just forgotten about it. But now we get to see what's in here. Bunch of stuff. So big ice, Janus. All seeing eye, Highline Grid. Interesting. Since we're gonna levy soon anyway, it's not a big deal to fire off this haze and not get a hit on it. Uh, certainly want to get rid of this. Oh, I missed the Astrolab draw as well. Question is, if anything that makes us actually pay for the keyhole. Like we could fire a keyhole and just keep doing it, letting him install whatever he wants. Uh, could go wrong in a lot of ways. I think we almost have him in a lock here. 
He's not doing much. Is this the fake out or the real deal? Uh, let's try it. DDoS test run run. Test run for the heap getting false echo. And let's take a dive in, bounce this one back. Same dealio. It is a Vitruvius. I, I mean, they're just plotting him in his hand, right? He has to figure out what he's going to do. Because we can eventually just run his hand a bunch of times and pick them up if he keeps anything in there. And we know he drew four from the Jackson. So odds were he picked up an agenda that he couldn't deal with. So I guess I don't blame him for calling our bluff there, and it was not a bluff we had it all along. So we, we managed to do it despite him getting the prior rack up here. Thinking Crescendus is probably the way to go. I gotta find one influence for it. Maybe the Hades can go. Maybe even we don't need key keyhole and medium. I've had them be good before together because you can trash the non-agendas and access a bunch of cards. As far as like raw number of accesses goes, the advantage of having both is that you can shuffle, see a bunch of medium, shuffle, see a bunch of medium. Uh, the downside to medium being the CVS is fairly common these days. If you hit it, you reset, and then you're super sad. Uh, the down downside to keyhole being if they have Jackson Howard, you gotta get rid of it first, which means checking all the remotes, whether you want to or not. That kind of sucks. So I think this deck can still be tuned somewhat uh, like the conflict is in one way that you have you know the prepaids and quite a bit of credits once you start hitting your your money cards but you don't actually need that much money if you're not trashing things like the purpose of having all these credits is to keep like pads under control to keep like various things trash all the assets you need to care about sand sands that kind of thing but if you're not doing that you just have too much money that's not doing anything uh, I have to think about whether we can change it up a little bit. Maybe we can use game day to get a little more draw to speed things up. Game day could be kind of cool. Uh, employee strike is kind of needed to not lose to harpsichord. But I don't know if that's really the biggest concern for us. Tough to say. Anyway, I, I like the idea. It's surprisingly robust to like Ash and Caprice. Not so good against fast advance, of course, but Often their ice is weak enough that you can just do your gigantic dig and win that way once they've fast advanced a few Astros. Yeah, tough to say. It's neat though, this card was in the binder for a long time. Like spin cycle number seven, that's ages ago. And getting to actually pull it out is pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys.